What's up, everybody? And <laughs> welcome to the third generation rest podcast, 3GW talking fast lane WWE with your boy, the real big E and Robbie Ambassador. Uh, they should have called this pay per view tag lane because it's like three tag matches, a triple threat match, and then one singles match. Only one singles match. I don't know. Has that ever happened before? Man, nah, no, nah, I'm pretty sure it hasn't. Right? Well, maybe so. The only other event I could think that could be possible would be like an old Survivor Series. Well, yeah, because they used to do the traditional five on five. But yeah, as far as any regular pay per view where there's only been one singles match, I mean, I'm there's only five matches on this card yeah. total. Yeah. So that's that's also kind of curious. But no, man, I I cannot recall it. Me either. Me either. Um, but hey, so what we got this weekend? Five matches to look up to. But before we get into that, the predictions here, I do, well, for the first time in a long time, I do actually want to talk about NXT No Mercy, which was took place this past weekend. Um, I was actually looking forward to this. There was some matches on here that I thought were uh uh that got me excited. Um definitely Tiffany Stratton and Becky Lynch. And definitely um Ilya Dragunov versus uh uh Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo Hayes, well, I can't think of that boy's name. Uh and then yeah, Dirty Dom versus Trick Daddy, aka Trick Wheeling. I can't I can't even make fun of the brother no more. He didn't got over. Who who would have thought? I'd have never you if you'd have told me when they first debuted that Trick Williams would be as over as he is now. Oh man, I remember that first uh podcast after we uh Yeah, we killed that. Yeah, after uh, <laughs> Trick debuted. I had a little more sympathy. I always try to remind people NXT was developmental. I was gonna cut him some slack, but yeah, you you was all over him. When I eat, he eat. When I eat, he eat, yeah, no <laughs> <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought the show kicked off pretty good. I didn't watch the kickoff because there's a match on there, but I mean with the Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker match, I thought that was pretty really, really good. Um, those two work well together. Uh really really hard hitting. Braun going through a table. Uh Baron Corbin showing this new side of him. I, I really had a good time with that match. Uh, I probably I, I would have given them pay per view worthy for sure. Yeah, same here. Um, then Trick Williams and Dirty Dom for the NXT North American Championship again. Crowd just this dude's over. I mean, even last night watching NXT, uh, which I kind of had a feeling that was going to happen. Um. Uh, it was supposed to be Mustafa Ali in that position. He was supposed to win it, and then he was going to lose it on the NXT show, the TV show. So, I mean, if somebody, you know, Shawn Michaels calls you and says, hey, Mustafa's not going to be able to go, but we're going to run with you to do this, to take his part. You ain't saying no. No, you'd be crazy to. No, you you get featured. I was happy for Trick. I mean, even though apparently I have not watched, I haven't finished watching Raw. I haven't watched uh, in it, last night's NXT either, but I'm assuming it was a, a short title ring. Yeah, but it was not clean. So, well, but we didn't figure it would be. Yeah, yeah it was very, very, very uh, uh, one sided. Let's just put it that way. Uh, the family, oh, I, I like this match too. The, uh, Tony D'Angelo and and Stax, Creed Brothers, uh, Angel Garza, Angel Garza, and Umberto Carrillo, and uh, Jesus Christ, get it out the mud, man. That is one of the worst names. Worst I've damn heard. name. Out the mud. Out the mud. OT, just, I just go with OTM. I'll go with that. I am not saying out the mud. It's a saying. You can't name yourself after a saying. 
it's it, okay, whatever. Maybe uh, the young folks like it. I, I, the match itself was great, though. I thought this was a great fade four way. Regardless of their name, those those two can work. I don't know what nationality those two are, but um, I really am a big fan of Julius Creed. That dude can do no wrong suplexing everybody the way he does. He, he's insane. Uh, the, to me, the worst match on the card was this Noam Dar versus Butch, which is unfortunate because I like Butch. Uh, Pete Dunn, for those that don't know, big fan of his, but I just don't like the way this, the, the rules and everything. And then I really the, have, yeah, the Heritage Cup rules. Yeah. Where I guess they have like rounds, three minute rounds with 20, 20 second breaks in between. And I, yeah. I guess I just really don't understand it. I, it's just too gimmicky for me. Just have a regular match. Too gimmick, too much going on for it to be a wrestling ring, wrestling match. Yeah. Yeah, it looked more like a boxing match. I mean, they each had people in their corner, kind of, you know, they'd go to the corner and they they look like handlers trying to get them ready for the next round. It just, you know, yeah, yeah just wrestle. Ilya Dragunov and Carmelo Hayes put on a match that I would call superb. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. That was that was Excellent match. That was a work of art. Twenty minutes, and I will say the same for Becky Lynch and Tiffany Stratton. I also will give that one superb. Um, wasn't perfect, so I couldn't go into the classic, but it was definitely superb. Tiffany Stratton impressed the hell out of me, and I'm gonna say something very controversial, somewhat MJ bookish, best swan Tom bomb we ever seen. Mm. I tell you what, man, that girl is very athletic. I I haven't watched a lot of NXT, so I haven't seen a lot of her. But what I have seen. On this pay per view and on the last one, I really have been impressed with her. She's not just a pretty face. No, nope. this girl is very athletic. She's talented. She can wrestle, and I definitely can see her on the main roster uh, soon. Soon, she could be there uh, now. I think she's more talented than some of the ladies they have on the main roster now. I agree. That uh, I don't know what to call it, but the gymnastic move she was doing, and and then knocked Becky through the barricade. Uh, mm-hmm. Not missing a beat. Um, she takes bumps really well. I guess the only thing I would ding her on is maybe sell a little longer. Um, she just tends to get up too quick, but that's probably just young, her being so young and spry, which she re- she really is. And her swans, yeah. I mean, she gets airtime and manages to get her hands out and flips just perfect timing. I don't yeah. know how she does it, but she she's, she's got to have a gymnastics background. She or does. Something. She does. She does. Okay. Yeah. 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 And man, she was bleeding. She actually bled during the match. Now I don't know if that yeah. was inadvertent or if no. I remember they were bleeding. fighting up the stairs, and I think Becky yeah, in yeah. Head with that thing. Yeah, yeah. But man, it got rough. Uh, Becky apparently suffered some kind of puncture wound or something. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Those girls were bruised up. They it, it got physical, man. It was yeah. nasty. But it, but I didn't think it crossed a line into too much too violent. No. You know what I mean? No. I don't really like matches that go. There. I don't think just give me some good wrestling. But I thought these ladies put on a, a hell of a show. Yeah, yeah. I I was nervous because Becky pulled out that bag, and I said, "Is there thumbtacks in there?" Mm. So I was like, "They're going. They pulling out the thumbtacks." But it I, was Barbie doll pieces. <laughs> yeah, man. And I really didn't like the spot with the uh, barbed wire bat because they really didn't do much with that. No, that they, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That mm-hmm. was the other thing that I couldn't go into class because you didn't do anything with that barbed wire bat. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, but. And I'm not saying I wanted to see them use it, but if if look, if you're gonna bring it out, right. well then you gotta you gotta, you use, gotta it. use it. Yeah. Yeah. But I will give kudos for using the fire extinguisher. I think anytime you pull that out, it brings you back to the old hardcore match days. Man, I I, I never liked the fire extinguisher <laughs> thing. It's just it don't hurt. It's just it's just I don't know what it it's is. Just a it hurt. Yeah. It, it always pops the crowd when it happens. That's all. But yeah, if you have not seen No Mercy, I I definitely recommend checking that out. And uh, NXT is 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 becoming more of a third brand. Next week, um, some heavy hitters are going to be on NXT. John Cena, uh, Cody Rhodes, Paul Heyman, Becky, and Asuka. All on NXT next week. So hmm. I know you haven't seen it yet, but I'm just saying next week's NXT is going to be stacked. Yeah, I'm going to start recording NXT again. I have been enjoying it. I've heard what you and the inside man are saying about it in the chat. You've been watching it more than I have. Uh, I think I'm going to start 
start watching it weekly again. I really do think they are trying to make it a third brand rather than just, it is still developmental, but they're just, I think it's a smart thing to do to get some of these bigger name wrestlers down there to get more eyes on the product and and get more eyes on that young talent. And integrate them. So when they do make the move, it's not such a shock, culture shock. So when you're standing in the ring with the John Cena, you're not like, you know, yeah, oh my God, it's, it's yeah, cool. you've already met him. Get that out of right. the way. You yeah, know, yeah. his nerves off, and you know, yeah. So, all right, now let's get on to the main event. Talking this weekend show, WWE Fast Lane. Um, curious about this match. One of the, let's get to the tag matches. We got getting them out the way. This is a six man with. Uh, LWO, Ray Mysterio. Well, I, I don't know. Is it Ray Mysterio? I guess it's Ray and and uh uh I don't know who's gonna be. I, I'm assuming it's gonna be Ray, Santos Escobar, and then you know either one of the two. Or, yeah, one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a six man tag, so yeah, okay. And I guess of course Bible Lashley and Street Profits, I guess they're gonna try to work through their differences, and this will probably be the time that this this is it. This is it. Street Profits gotta show some some veracity, some, 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 do some real heel tactics, do some play dirty, you know, don't be, take a page out of Ric Flair's book here, you know, uh, and they got to win. Bottom line, they got to win. They want to stay with Bobby. Um, the only thing I don't like about the whole Bobby Lashley thing is having, he hasn't really set an agenda for them. Like he wants them to show him something, but show him what you want to win championships. Do you, I'm gonna go just beat people up. What is it? What is it? Was it the excuse me motivation? He did cut that promo talking about getting titles and everything, but it falls flat when you're actually not feuding with somebody that has a title. That's all I'm saying. And with them only being one tag team championship, which is another match, um, I don't know. Just makes it difficult. So, but I am gonna go Bible Lasting Street Profits win this one. Yeah, I am too. I think they need it more. Uh, LWO is already over, but you're trying to reboot the Street Profits, and this is their chance to prove to Bobby that, okay, we're, we're ready for the big time. We're ready to take this next step, and I think it does happen Saturday night. They'll win. It won't be clean, uh, but that's the whole point, and, uh, right. but the Profits will win. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Getting to the next for the actual uh was the unified tag team championships, or what they call them. You got Judgment Day versus Main Event J Uso and Cody Rhodes. Uh this is for the championships now. Um this is actually tough because uh based on What happened yesterday? Uh, I don't know, and they, and they just got the titles last month, so this makes it hard to to think that they would drop them so quickly. But then I also had to remember that Damian Priest has that briefcase, so it's like, eh. and the whole JD McDonough thing. I don't know. Uh, 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 uh. I'm gonna say somehow, some way, Judgment Day retain. That's that's what I'm gonna say. I don't know who. I, I guess Jay would have to take the fall. Maybe maybe Cody takes the fall. And I don't know. I just. I don't yeah, know. man. This, I'm going Judgment Day. Yeah, it's a tough one for me too because there's a lot at play here. You know, we know that. The Judgment Day has been trying to get Jay to join. I don't really see Jay joining, but what if he were to turn on Cody to show his allegiance to the Judgment Day? That would be a swerve I wouldn't see coming. Kind of shocking. Uh, I don't really see that happening. But like, but that's part of that's why I have a hard time picking a winner in this one. Like you, I agree. Judgment Day just got the titles. Yeah. And Judgment Day is pretty much running raw. They have all the gold. I don't see any reason to stop that. But then how does Jay 
obviously, look, there's Dirty Dom. So that's how Judgment Day wins. Mommy or Dirty Dom interfere, and Judgment Day wins, but not clean. That's how it happens. All right. All right. I see. Uh, you ever watched Cold as Balls with Kevin Hart? I've seen episodes. I haven't watched any lately, but I have seen some. It's like Rey Mysterio's on there. Kevin Hart, man, is the hardest working man in show business. He, he done took James's place. Yeah. He's had a lot of WWE. He's had Undertaker. He's had Bianca, the Bella Twins. Yeah, Ronda. Ronda. Yeah, he's, he, I mean, he's Kevin Hart. Nobody's going to tell him no. Right. Yeah. He's had Floyd Money Mayweather on there. He's had yeah. a, lot of, a lot of big time players on there. All right. Got the triple threat match. I, I'm guessing this is for the WWE Women's Championship. Uh, the champion, Eel Sky, defending against Oscar and Charlotte Flair. Um, This is I'm probably going to be an unpopular vote, but... Uh, uh, I kind of feel like... I don't know, this title reign really hasn't gone well. I just feel like somehow, some way, it's going to end up back on Charlotte. Like Char- I don't think Charlotte's won this one yet this belt and i think that they need to elevate this championship a little more uh, i mean look at how look at Rhea and how dominant she is and she's making a name for that championship it's just the eo with her being unable to really cut a promo and 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 damage control is dead sorry it just is so i i'm actually kind of hoping charlotte wins and that's she's my pick Man, it's hard because I like EO. I was happy when she won the title, but this reign has been underwhelming. And it's too bad because she's great in the ring, but it, it does help if you can deliver a good promo. And like you said, uh, damage control being like a ball and chain around her neck isn't helping either. Look, eventually we know that Charlotte is going to break her father's record. I believe she's at, what, 14 right now? So, yeah. And... I don't, it's not too early to start thinking about the setup for, you know, we've got Survivor Series coming up. Then the next big one after that is Royal Rumble, which kicks off WrestleMania season. So, we, you know, you got to start thinking about how that is all going to line up heading into Mania. Is it better to have Charlotte as champion going into Mania or EO as champion going into Mania? I think we all agree that it's Charlotte. Yeah. So I'm going to agree with you and say that only because Eel's reign has, hasn't has been what it should be that WWE will make it right by putting it on Charlotte, who is always so reliable. Like her or not, she is one of the best in the business. She yeah. pops the crowd. She She's just great at everything she does. So I'm going to go Charlotte. She sells. She puts asses in seats. Yep. She does. That's it. That's what it's about. And, you know, with the new, with the merger TKO, you know, things is about, I think, you know, a lot of changes about to be made. A lot of changes. Got the bloodline, what's left of the bloodline. J, uh, Jimmy Uso with Solo Sokoa taking on L.A. Knight and John Cena, who I will not be referring to as G-O-A-T. <laughs> That's not happening. Unless he's not better than Stone Cold Rock. He's not even more iconic than Hogan, if you ask me. But that's Man, just... a lot of people disagree, though. Dude dude is is in that conversation, though. I'll say that. Whether you like him or not, he's in that conversation with those guys. At the bottom of the conversation. At the bottom of the conversation. It just yeah. depends on who you talk oh, to. You know, Hogan said some bad shit, but at the end of the day, he was he was way bigger than what John was. You know, he's he he's the one that opened the door for, you know, wrestlers to get in, to get in movies, to get in TV shows, and things like that. Him and uh, Terry Funk, they both oh, yeah, yeah. opened the door for that. Terry Funk was actually doing movies, I think, before Hulk Hogan. But yeah, yeah. I'm just saying you can't deny how over Cena was. No, I'm not he taking did. what he's done away. Yeah, you can't he deny how over not he was. Yeah, he ain't him. Well, okay. That's all subjective, you know. Like for me, Ric Flair is the goat, but he's not everybody's goat. So, 
you know. He's over here. Well, I would say that, but I mean, if, if you're talking <laughs> popularity, look, we were just talking butts and seats. I mean, Cena has put as many butts and seats as any any other wrestler in history. But nobody, I should say nobody, he still can't do it better than Austin or The Rock. So therefore, are you talking about just wrestle? His presence, like he, when he, him coming back, got a pop. But when The Rock came back a few weeks ago, it, does, it just doesn't compare. When Stone yeah, no, Cold Steve Austin was at WrestleMania 38, it just doesn't compare. He's not yeah. better than you. Yeah. I don't want to make this a Cena podcast, but. No, no, I'm, I'm not. Saying, I'm just saying. Yeah, I, don't think, I, I don't like it that they refer to him as the GOAT either. I understand why they do it, but yeah, I don't like it. But I also am not all about the Cena hate that a lot of people are. I mean, dude was incredibly oversold as much merch as many tickets as any of those guys he's definitely in the league with those guys i'm not saying he's better but he's definitely in the league with them but anyway uh that's that's just truth bro that's that i ain't i ain't a big cena fan but i i, I don't to me it's not personal or anything no it, it, no 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 i don't i yeah, wish but, we did I mean, i'm just dude saying I mean, Cena it had a 20-year run. That's longer than a, a lot of those guys had. 20 years uh, at the top? How many How many wrestlers in history can say that? I think Hogan can. Oh, man, no. No, he can't. I mean, if you count his run in, in WCW, which I didn't see, by the time I became a Hogan fan, it, it was already like the mid-'80s. Right, that so was you go I, from the 80s to 2000, that's a 20-year run. Man, but not at the top, though. He wasn't at the top the whole time. When I mean, WrestleMania, Cena, WrestleMania 1 was, what, 80? That was like 85. Four, and 80 then five. he headlined WrestleMania 1, 2, 3. He didn't headline 4. He headlined 5 against and 6. And then after that, started to taper off a little bit for Hogan. Because right, because he, he got the him and Vince got in the, the whole trial thing happened. Right. And he went to WCW, but he was also doing movies and he was doing TV shows, you know, maybe you know, man, not the on. best, not not man, not, not, even, not not I mean the worst. They ain't no <laughs> not the best. You can't say not the best. They were the worst. Santa with muscles. All right. Oh uh, man. Hard. Um what, what's Thunder in Paradise was a good show. Suburban man. Commando. Thunder and Paradise was a good show. They were awful, man. Those movies, they were awful. Terrible. And I, you know, I ain't saying Cena's made no great movies. He hasn't. But, I mean, his body of work is way better than Hogan's. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. I'm in paradise, <laughs> though. Those that don't know, go check it out. It's a good show. All right, man. All right. <sighs> the inside man, good brother, has had it. With the bloodline <laughs> shit. <laughs> I don't know where you stand on it. It is kind of reached the point of overstaying its welcome. I would have to agree. Now, a lot of it depends on... Well, look, let's talk about this match first. Let's talk okay. about this match and what we think will happen, and then I'll go on with uh, this has a lot of fanfare, obviously, not just with John Cena, but with LA Knight. Um, I'm really not sure what this new Jimmy Uso character is. Um, he doesn't really have an identity. Is he back in the bloodline? Have we confirmed this yet, or is he just still trying to work on getting it? Have we haven't seen Roman in months? So, uh, it is what it is, but I. I, I somehow I don't think I think uh Ellie Knight and John Cena get the win here. I can't see the bloodline winning. No, I don't either. I think LA Knight and uh Cena get the win, and I hope LA Knight gets the pin. Gets the pin. I, I think this is going to, you know, this whole bloodline thing, like you said, is kind of running its course. And I think that's part I, I think this loss will kind of help to to take this story in a different direction. If you've watched Jimmy the past couple of weeks on SmackDown and you look at Heyman in the background, he's kind of rolling his eyes like, what is this fool doing? You know, we've seen Jimmy kind of take the mic and, mm -hmm. and kind of act like he's the tribal chief. Um, we've kind of seen Solo give him the side eye. And I just think that 
the loss on Saturday will kind of start the ball rolling into kind of the end of the bloodline as we used to know it. I don't think Jimmy will be a part of it. I think Roman is going to return soon, and uh, he's going to have some stuff to say to Jimmy. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be the bloodline like we re remember. Jay is already gone, and I don't think Jimmy's going to be a part of it either. Yeah. Uh, this has to end. Roman just needs to come back and say, this is this is a me solo and Paul him and Joe now. Yeah, I think that would be good. I think that would work because I I still think I don't think Solo is ready to go solo. No pun intended, but I don't think he's ready to just be out on his own without Heyman or uh, Roman uh, as as part of the package. But I right. do think they could now where that leaves Jimmy just on his own. I don't know. Does he go reunite with his brother? Does he just try to do a solo thing? Uh, I'm curious to see how that works out. I don't want to hear another just me, Oos. He's already got some new music, though, that, that's better than uh, Jay's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He's just a less interesting brother. Kind of how it always, been, always has been. Um, <laughs> it's just... Uh, I don't know. He he's the uh Genetti between the two. <laughs> and Jay Ooh, is definitely that's something rough. like that's rough. I mean he is. <laughs> he's not like like if the Street Profits broke up, I think um uh uh not Montez Ford, but uh Angelo Dawkins. I think he'd be fine on his own. He's mm. lost weight, he can talk on the mic. It might take him a while to kind of get there, but I don't think he would fail because he can wrestle and he's always working on his career. I've seen videos of him uh, working other people, working with Natalia, working with, uh, uh, I forgot her husband's name, but they, I've seen him doing real work and he, 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 he can work. He can work. I can see he is putting in the work and, and I, I'm rooting for him because obviously, eventually, I think we're going to see Montez go on his own. And I think he has a good shot at being a big star, but yeah. oh, Montez will be a big star. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, we'll see. Last but not least, the World Heavyweight Championship match: Shinsuke Nakamura versus Seth freaking Rollins. Uh. Hmm. A big part of me feels like uh, no matter who walks away is the winner is going to get cashed in on by Damian Priest. And I have a feeling he's going to walk out with the belt. That's what I'm going to go with. Um, I feel like they're really pushing Judgment Day to be the the what, blood, what the bloodline was last year. I think they're trying to push them to, to do that. And they need a big-time championship. So, yeah, um, I got. I guess I got to pick a winner here. I'm gonna say, man, I almost want to say Shinsuke wins, but then you then gets cashed in on. But I hate to say that because that make him look bad. Uh, Versus, you know what? I'm going to say this. So Franz wins the match, but he's, he's so beat up and his back is so bad that Priest comes down and, and beats him and gets the championship. And then Seth can take a hiatus. Because uh, I, I do think while his back may not be as bad as what's in the storyline, I do think his back is actually bad and he probably does need to take a break to do some type of rehab for it. And that's okay. I think it's better if a heel has the championship right now anyway, so a baby face can chase. I don't know who that baby face will be, but uh, we'll see. But that's my pick. I definitely could see that happening. Man, I like Priest. I just don't know if I see him as, you know, world championship material, but but but, but it wouldn't be out of line or anything. I, I just... 
I don't know, man. And then he's also tag team champion. That gets kind of messy. How do they work that out? I'm sure there's a way they could. It's wrestling. There's a way they could work through all that. Got to say, I'm starting to feel a little bit like the Judgment Day, like you guys feel about the uh, Bloodline. I mean, I enjoy them, but they're in the main event on Raw every week. They're starting to show on Raw every week. They got every title. Now, now maybe they win another title. When does it get to be too much? I don't know. But I'm going to agree. I'm going to say that Seth will retain like you. Hard-fought match, last man standing. He'll take a brutal beating, and uh, then Priest will come out to pick the bones and, and become the new champ. Yeah, Judge. I just want to see, like, uh, you know, we've seen all the factions, like the greatest factions. They've all kind of stood tall at the end of a pay per view with all the belts from Undisputed Era to Evolution to Bloodline. You know, that's what that's how you make a, a faction legit. They go, yeah, we got all the gold. Mm-hmm. You know, so, true, true. Uh, yeah. And that might entice more people to join. I don't know what the hell they're doing with this JD McDonough thing because he just he's like a little gnat getting involved in all their matches and shit. But yeah, and I don't know. I mean, do you think he fits with the bloodline? He, I don't know why. He just just I don't know. I mean, he's Finn's boy. Finn Balor did train him and everything, so it makes sense. It's just I think it's because they've gone like nobody else in the group trusts him, but Finn does and. But Finn himself doesn't have well, I guess he has a tag team championship, but it's not the same. But I mean he I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think if they'd just been better off letting him in than fighting it all this time. I mean, he's 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 essentially what Sami Zayn was in the bloodline. Like trying to get in, they finally gonna let him in. I don't know. Yeah. And then you know, you talk about every member of the bloodline having gold. Well oh, not sorry, bloodline judgment day having gold. Well, what do, what do you do? About uh, JD, JD McDonough just bringing him in with no gold, and what gold is left for him to win? He's he's he's, he's just going to be the cheerleader. I mean, even when 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 the bloodline did have all the gold, they had the tag belts, and and Roman had the championship. I mean, Sami Zayn was the cheerleader. Okay, all right. I don't know. I don't know. No, hey, I, look, I guess we tune in and find tune out. Tune in and find out what. Happened. But let us know. I know for a fact, old Britain Stegner will probably be watching this show. I know we mentioned before that we were gonna we're gonna try it again this time around, uh, post show this weekend. Um, I'll I'll do a better job of putting out notice. So after we get done giving our grade, uh, if you would like to, uh, I'll, I'll post a link, and uh, you can come on. Probably do like two, three minutes. Just give us your quick thoughts on the show if you would like to. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, we, we, we can just make it show more interactive. So uh, let us know. You don't have to show your face. You can just do audio, if, if, if whatever you're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. But uh, we just want to interact with you all. And, and thank you for your support. And uh, get your thoughts on the wrestling. Yeah. I got one thing before we go. And we'll make it quick. All right. Edge in AEW thoughts. Hard to say I don't like it. I mean, I really don't like it. I mean, he's been WWE through and through, tried and true. Uh, I could, but I can't knock somebody that still has a passion to do what they want to do and is going to get paid to do what they want to do. So I understand that. I don't think it's going to, it's not going to tarnish his legacy. He's already Hall of Famer. He's already solidified. So I'm not worried about that. It's just if I'm him and I've got acting chops, I've already been acting. I just would go that route versus wrestling still, but that's me. He obviously still has unfinished business, so um, and it's good for them. They need they need a star number one, but they also need somebody that can tell a good story and teach other people how to tell a good story, because you can wrestle your ass off, and I don't care. Because I'm not invested in you. So he can help AEW grasp the concept of telling stories and having great matches. Because that was why the Bloodline story was working so well this year. Because it was compelling. Nine times out of ten, the stuff that was so compelling 
did not involve the match. So it's a good thing for them for sure. It's it's uh I, I just hope that it works out better than other get he's, he's the best get they've got, period. Uh he's the only one I think that has wrestled Undertaker at WrestleMania. No, CM Punk did. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, he's, he's good for him. You know, I'm not gonna tell him you no know, bad for anybody to get that gets work and do, does what they love. I just kind of would have been okay seeing him do other things, but hey. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen him retire with WWE. I, I just don't like AEW. I just don't think it's a good company. I don't think Tony Khan is, is a good uh owner, manager, CEO, whatever you want to call it. I just don't think the organization uh, is worthy of Edge. But I don't begrudge Edge making a living. I mean, for him, wrestling, look, he knows how to wrestle. Hollywood, I don't think Adam Copeland in a movie, look, he, he can be in movies, but are they going to be big time movies? No. Acting career is not a slam dunk for him, but wrestling is. Well, he's been so on, uh, I don't know if you saw him in Vikings. He's pretty good. No, I'm sure he is, but I just don't think not, not, gonna he's not going to be John Cena or Batista. Well, so that's my <laughs> point. Is that, yeah, I don't know if a movie <laughs> career for Adam Copeland, it's an option, but it's not like that's a slam, the slam dunk that wrestling is. So yeah, I think no, he's no, no. Going with I, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I wish him and WWE could have worked something out, but. Are there some matches in AEW I would be interested to see him in? Look, him versus MJF, interesting. Uh, him versus I don't even know who's over there now. Who, who you know? Who him versus Christian. Uh, oh man, I could care less about Edge and Christian. That that ship has sailed. I, I saw that twenty years ago. Don't need to see that again. Yeah, that but they got to do it because they're both in the same company. You know no, that. I'm sure they are going to do it, and the fans will pop for it. But I just I'm 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 over all of that. Um, You're, you know. The problem is the big guys that they had that can that can work with like a Wardlow. I mean, they 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 done them so bad, and then and then uh, uh, Miro too. It, it, that's the problem, is that they book people so terribly, it's hard to look forward to edge wrestling these people. MJF though is the one, and I, I think him and uh, Hangman Adam Page have a good match too. For sure. Now, what about uh, look? I know. Oh, him and Kenny. Him and Kenny. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That that would be great. Now, what about a tag team match, Edge across the ring from Sting, in some way, shape, or form? I, I think well, he'd help Sting when he debuted. So I don't think he's gonna be on, on the side of Sting. I think he's maybe standing next to him. Oh, okay, okay. He came in as a baby. He helped Sting. That's how he showed up because Christian was about to hit him, and then that's when Edge showed up. Oh, okay. See, I didn't see how he how he did Yeah, that. yeah, he I came in. I didn't even know Sting was involved in that. Okay, I had no idea. Yeah, okay. he helps Sting. He's got the same song, uh, same entrance. Okay. He, he's even got the rated R moniker. He's okay, just... he must have trademarked some of that, or WWE pro- might have just said, look, if this were Vince, they probably would have said, you get nothing. But Triple H probably said, look, man, you've done everything for this company. You know, we, we don't hold no grudges. Take the music. It's it's Alter Bridge anyway. I don't know. It's if not. It's not WWE. WWE's anyway. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but the rated you know, R thing, he must have trademarked that. He he must have. Uh, but he's he's the, he's rated R Adam Copeland. Okay. So they he couldn't take the name Edge, but can't take Edge. That's that's WWE's. I I don't really understand that. I mean, I guess because that way they can still sell Edge merchandise, right? I, mean, I guess if they. You know, I don't know. Edge with 30 years almost. Right. Yeah, I don't know. But look, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm just curious about your Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm excited to see Jay Cargill. Apparently, she's going to Raw. Uh, Probably boom, she may show up at Fastlane. You never know. You never know. Yeah, I thought they would keep her at NXT for a while because, man, I do think she needs to get her skills tighter. Uh, So I thought she would stay in NXT for a while. But look, man, the way they've been hyping her, you, you can't keep her in yeah. NXT. You got it, you know, the way they've been hyping her. But I, I just hope it works out for Jade because she does need some some work. Yeah. But I do think it was a great signing. And, and if she gets the work that she needs, she'll be a huge star. For sure. For sure. Let us know in the comments what you all think. 
and uh, hope you all enjoy the show. We'll be speaking to you all again. Uh, hopefully immediately after the after Fast Lane this Saturday from Indianapolis. Man, I couldn't have made that trip. It ain't far at all. But uh, yeah, we'll talk to y'all then. And have a great week. Peace.